Wiring a street rod is often considered a daunting task. It is not difficult if the work is planned and kept neat. Don't let this jumble of wires scare you. Many are from a pre-assembled, purchased wire harness, and others clearly identified as to where they go. Even though quite a bit of custom wiring was used for the 34, a painless wiring system was purchased for the major items. Well worth the price. Before starting, make wiring diagrams. All that is needed are labels indicating each item, like the painless brand fuse block, bright headlight, etc. Then draw connecting lines from the fuse block or from added fuse panels or terminal strips. Label the lines with painless words or your own numbering for wires added. Painless did not supply a wiring diagram. They use labels on the wires. However, a simple ohm meter defined 95% of their connections and a call to painless tech support provided the rest. A Dakota digital dash was used. It has a simple flat printed circuit board making it an easy fit. It includes all the gauges needed, as well as an indicator for the transmission. We'll also use their controller for the electric windows and doors. Great products and service. This is a picture of the Dakota digital controller. It can fit anywhere. The spot was found under the dash. Note the use of a terminal strip. I highly recommend using these wherever there are multiple wire connections. It's an inexpensive way to keep the wiring neat. Don't need many tools. In addition to an inexpensive volt ohm meter, soldering iron, a good terminal crimper is a sound investment. The red handled gardener bender crimper does a much better job than the combo stripper crimper that come with many of the terminal kits. A dash switch panel was cut from aluminum and many toggle switches installed. Five functions needed were all provided in a space to match the oval vintage air controller. The windows can be raised and lowered, the fuel pump prime with a momentary switch, the electric fans activated, and 110 watts of rear fog lights turned on when needed to assure the car is seen at night. This photo shows the start of our rear sound wall. No room for rear seats with the Pro Street tubs. The sound wall is filled with a CD player, amplifiers, subwoofer, radio, and speakers. Also located many of the items in the rear, such as the battery, alarm system, as well as door and window remote controller. All these electrical items required a lot of custom wiring. Use the painless wire to activate a high current relay to a six terminal fuse panel that provided 12 volts to many of these accessories terminal strips and relays to keep the high current wires short. That included a Ford remote starter solenoid so 12 volt power to the Chevy starter was only supplied when actually starting the car. This is the birch plywood sound wall nearing completion. Note the Optima battery. The subwoofer enclosure volume was calculated for optimum sound as defined by the speaker manufacturer. The sound wall looks very good covered in padding and leather. There are four tweeters, two mid-range speakers, a subwoofer, and two amps to power them. There are five wires going to each door to power windows, the door opener, and the alarm buzzer for the suicide door pin locks. I considered using door jam contacts, but clearance was minimal. I decided to use flexible wires with many fine strands route them along the lower door hinge. For minimum bending of the wire bundle, install the light spring behind the side panel to pull it straight when the door was closed. There are many wires going to the rear. Decided it would be best to keep these in the car rather than clutter the frame. Made some low channels from wood secured to the floor and covered with aluminum when the system was checked out. It was covered with insulation and carpeting when the interior was finished. Wanted to keep a clean look and found a simple way to include front directional signals and parking lights. 
Ford used what they called two light headlamps for cars that did not have the optional cow lamps installed. In addition to the headlight bulb, there is a socket for a turn signal parking bulb inside the reflector. The orange bulb used is seen lit in this photo. Converted Ford cow lights into rear running, turn, and stop lights. The multi-angle bracket was plasma cut from stainless, MIG welded, ground, and polished. 55 watt fog backup lights were attached to the bracket below the rear bumper. A beeper horn is also activated when in reverse since vision is minimal out of the rear window. A special circuit was used to have the horn not beep when only the fog lights are needed. The lower yellow circle in the photo shows a billet specialties license plate frame used as a running and third brake light. The upper circle is a third brake light molded into the body. With all the gawking received when driving the street rod, wanted to be sure folks knew the car was stopping. We used our 150 amp MIG welder for many items on the street rod. The argon based shielding gas comes from a large cylinder chained to the wall. To reduce the blast of gas at the weld start, we use our gas saver system, the first use of this patented system. It makes the gas cylinder last over twice as long and improves our weld start quality. It simply replaces the gas delivery hose. The patented gas saver system is a simple, inexpensive gas delivery hose with a small ID and a peak flow limiting orifice. It reduces wasted stored gas by over 80%. It retains the system pressure to supply enough start gas to purge the weld start area and to compensate for flow restrictions that occur while we're welding. It has no moving parts to set or wear. Thousands are in use in industry. For more wiring information and the special circuits used for the street rod, visit netwelding.com slash wiring underline details dot htm. Thank you.